Do you feel like you've fallen prey as clickbait to your bank by signing up with a housing loan that had attractively low interest rates only to find out that this would skyrocket after the first year? Don't worry, I feel exactly the same. Hey guys, what's up? In today's video, we're taking a break from talking about investments and mouth-watering returns and we're going to be talking about something that's less sexy. Today, we're going to be talking about debt. And not just any debt, we're talking about probably the biggest debt that you'll incur in your life and it's your housing loan or getting a mortgage. Now, if you already have one and have been paying off your loan or maybe you see yourself availing off one in the very near future, this video is for you. So the housing loan will apply not just to a house house, but if you're looking to buy a condominium unit or a piece of land, then this video will also be for you. I'm going to be sharing with you some housing loan strategies, which will hopefully help you as we continue on our financial journey. What interest rates should you be looking at and at what terms? And more importantly, how long? Sharing with you here my experience, so let's go. So in my case, I signed up with China Bank in 2014 for a 15-year loan. Now I felt great because I signed up with China Bank with an interest rate of 5.25% for the first year. And I felt like I had the best deal at that time. So for that first year, I made my payments on time, no problems. But to my surprise, by 2015, when I got my renewal letter, the interest rate had skyrocketed to 7.5%. So from 5.25%, it went up by 2.25%, which was an increase of about 40%. Now this got me feeling very fearful. I got a bad feeling in my stomach that perhaps this is what's gonna be happening for the next 13 years until 2029, which is still a good eight years from now, present day. So I wanted to explore my options. I didn't want to be at the mercy of the banks and do this regularly wherein the interest rates will just keep going up and up. So I'm sharing these with you now so that you can also explore. So for option number one, you can shop around and explore if you could take on a longer term contract rather than continuing your contract with a one year fixed term rate because yes, my housing loan would be for a period of 15 years but the agreed interest rate was only going to be on a per year basis. So again, every year this could change so I suggest you find something that would be for a bit of a longer term. In terms of the agreed interest rate, checking the Security Bank website for a 3-year fixed term, it's at 6.25%. And for 10 years, it's 7.75%. If you also check the RCBC website, they actually have a nice drop-down table there wherein you can see the different fixed term interest rates and you can combine different fixed term interest rates for the tenure of the entire contract and for what period you would like to apply the fixed term to. So as a general rule, and keep this in mind, the longer the term that you would set that fixed interest rate would actually mean a higher interest rate as I've shown you in my example. The reason behind this is that you're actually locking in the interest rate in case the economy is bad and the prevailing interest rates would go up. By fixing the term for a longer period, you are protecting yourself from further increases. So that's why the banks would charge you more for locking in your interest rate for a longer period. So you might be thinking that the 7.75% is not much any better than what was written to me but remember that was at 2015 had i explored this option before perhaps i would be looking at something maybe 6.5 or 7 percent for five or ten years so so perhaps that's something i should have done what six seven years ago so again locking in your interest rate if the economy improves then you're sort of in the losing end of that deal because the interest rates could be going down so in looking to lock in that longer term interest rate, you can talk to your existing bank or you can actually talk to other banks. From my experience, it seems like it's easier to move that contract from one bank to the other. It seemed like other banks would be more interested in getting your business rather than your existing bank, restructuring your loan or giving you options. So keep that also in mind that other banks might be able to give you that locked in interest rate that you're looking for rather than the existing bank that you're working with. Of course, the downside of moving your loan to another bank would mean that you're practically doing the same application process as you did the first time. So if you found the application process quite gruesome, then unfortunately, it's not gonna be any better this time because you're gonna have to go through the same background check, proof of income, and capacity to earn should you wish to avail of this option number one. So that's option number one. But if you find it too major and for one reason or the other, Maybe you're not too sure or you're not too keen about locking in that fixed term contract. 
Then there's still option number two. Renegotiate with your bank about the annual repricing that they just gave you. So I've brought this up with friends before and I'm surprised that a lot of people who have an annual repricing actually just take the interest rate at face value when in actuality you can renegotiate this with your bank. Well, I wouldn't say that it's a complete renegotiation but you can appeal the interest rate in my experience so far in the seven years was that I was always granted a slightly lower interest rate. So usually the repricing would come in at 7.5% and I send in a letter of appeal of asking for a discount and I've seen it go as low as 6.75%. Some years it was at 7%, some years it was at 7.25%. And I know that might not seem like a lot. Perhaps if you had bigger leverage or better connections, maybe you can appeal and renegotiate that further. But that discount already matters to me. And in one year, that's about savings of about 10,000 to 12,000 pesos, depending on which interest rate. That's not a lot, but it's something. It definitely helps with the monthly savings. So again, it's not mouth-watering savings here, but it's a little bit. And I think a little bit of that goes a long way. I think that's really decent for something that you just email the bank and they give you a discount on. So it's a pretty solid return. So which of these have I availed of? Like I said, I've availed of option number two. Why haven't I moved my housing loan to another bank altogether? I've explored that. And there are many reasons, but perhaps that's gonna be in another video. But to put simply, again, when you lock in your interest rate, that also locks you out of some flexibility. Case in point, if I wanted to sell my property, let's say I just sold it right now, I would just have to pay what I owe the bank based on the interest rate this year versus had I locked in for a longer term, whatever I promise to pay for that three or five year lock-in period, I would have to pay the bank even if I sell it now. So I do lose a little bit in that sense because I'm paying for interest rate that incurs over the next five years. Well, it's not that you're going to be paying it for the next five years, but the cumulative value of that is what you're going to be paying the bank because that's what you promise to pay with the longer term lock-in period. All right, I hope that wasn't too complicated. I hope you got something in terms of your housing loan strategies. Again, whether you're coming into this new or whether you're already perhaps halfway through paying off your decades long housing loan. I hope this shed some light on the possible options that you have, whether it's something major by working out your loan again, or perhaps it's something as simple as appealing your annual repricing. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you again next time. Thanks and wishing you fruitful returns. Happy investing.